can you go through some of the recording capabilities that the Neve 8424 has to offer? Okay, all 24 channels have two line level inputs. Input B is the default recording input that can be connected to any line level instrument or to external preamps. In the center section, we have two onboard 1073 preamps. These have input and output Mariner transformers that deliver that familiar 1073 sound. And we also have a rotary trim pot that allows you to drive that 1073 gain and get that famous harmonic distortion. Up at the top, we have some familiar preamp functions such as 48 volts, your phase flip, and a low Z impedance button for ribbon microphones. What was the decision behind including only two preamps? Well, a lot of production work nowadays requires minimal microphone inputs, but a lot of virtual instruments, hip hop, electronic music, singer songwriters usually only need one or two microphone inputs when they're recording vocals or instruments while they're building up those projects and they're overdubbing one at a time in their in-the-box productions. So by including two premium quality 1073 preamps and a large channel count for mixing, we're allowing these producers to have what they need to record many overdubs without compromising on quality. And I can see that these instrument DIs there as well. Are they part of the 1073 preamp? No, the instrument DIs are completely separate from the 1073s, so you can use them at the same time. Uh, they, they're connected directly under the console armrest, so you can plug an instrument in straight away, ready to record. So the 1073 and the instrument DIs, they're completely independent from the 24 channels? Yes, that's correct. And the 1073s can be used as standalone units with their own input and outputs at the back. You can patch them wherever you want. And both 1073s and DIs have smart routing that allows them to be sent to channels 17, 18, 19 and 20, respectively, without any patching and that takes advantage of the channel strips, routing, insert sends and direct outputs ready to be recorded into the DAW. Underneath we have the 500 slots and, and these can be used as inserts at the push of a button so that you can add an EQ or a compressor into your recording chain before it reaches the DAW. Okay, so we've mentioned producers, we've mentioned artists. What about smaller studios that are going to need more than two preamps to record? The 8424 has been designed in such a way to accommodate modular expansion of its recording capabilities. So including many more built-in preamps would make the bass console much more expensive and artists and producers who only require one or two preamps for their work would then be paying for hardware that they never use. The 8424 was designed so that you pay for what you need as you need it. Input B can take line level inputs such as synths, drum machines and modular systems directly. You plug them in and you're ready to go and you adjust the trim levels accordingly. And of course, a lot of smaller studios and writing rooms and artists, they've always got their own outboard units anyway. Yes, and the 8424 allows you to simply connect your current preamps through the console rather than swapping them all out and just using the onboard pre's. So you can create a customizable recording platform to your taste. You simply connect your preamp output to input B on the console. This then becomes your microphone recording input on any channel that you choose. So the output of the Neve 1073 OPX, for example, can be connected into the back of this as well? Yes, very easily. In fact, we developed the 8424 in tandem with our latest preamp, the 1073 OPX. These two products are designed to go hand in hand so that you can expand the recording capabilities of the console, adding eight 1073s to any eight channels that you wish. So as well with the Neve 1073 OPX, I can still drive the input gain in and trim it back like you would do on a traditional 1073 preamp. Yeah, it's perfect for that. You, you're basically adding eight more 1073s and with the ability to dial back that gain using the input B trim, you've effectively got 10 1073s on this console, which is more than enough for recording a drum kit. So that's quite a lot of versatility then for a small format console. Now, can you just tell me some more about the record and signal flow? Yeah, it's okay. So up at the top, with input B selected, this is my recording input. So this level can be adjusted with the digitally controlled trim at the top. Now you can see as I adjust the trim at the top, that the exact gain increments are displayed on the screen at the bottom. This is great for trimming stereo sources or groups of inputs accurately. And I can also interrogate current trim settings. 
And what about the metering? So we have an eight stage LED meter, then that displays my incoming signal in PPM scale. Then this gives us 24 dB of headroom before clipping. Signal then flows down through the channel strip through the three aux sends or the stereo Q send. And I can add any outboard processing to the recording chain via this switchable channel insert. What about direct out? So you've got direct out for every channel? Yes, every channel has a direct output that can be boosted by up to 10 dB. This direct output then feeds into your audio interface, ready to record the signals into the DAW. Now I can select if I want that DAW input to be pre-fader for creating just straight through stems, or if I want the, the fader levels to make manual adjustments to that level, I can set them as post-fader. And this looks familiar as well, the FNC option. Yes, so this feature is for a future upgrade coming in 2020 as a free software upgrade. And this will allow users to remotely control a connected OPX with the trim pots becoming the gain controls for a connected OPX unit. So that offers even more flexibility and integration when recording. So how do I then listen back to the channels that I've just recorded? Well, several ways actually. Um, you can listen back to the entire DAW mix back through the console's external control room monitor input. But since this is a dual input channel strip, you can listen back to individual recorded channels at the push of a button by switching the input over to input A. Or if I want to monitor the DAW return at the same time as I'm recording, I can use the console's ILM mode. ILM mode, that's inline mixing? Yeah, that stands for inline mixing. And this is a, a feature that large format consoles have had for a long time. We wanted to include that in the 8424's feature set. So what we can do is we can bring back that DAW signal into the same channel strip via the channel's stereo cue. This then becomes our small fader and pan control for the recorded signal. So this looks like a really useful feature. So I can record my guitar in through the console's DI into my amp modeling plugin, and then I can listen to all the in-the-box processing at the same time. Yes, you can. So ex with this mode, you don't even need to sacrifice a second console input to do this or have to repatch anything. A simple button push is all you need. I can choose to then monitor latency free from the recording input, or I can monitor from the uh, DAW return to hear all that in-the-box processing, or I can choose a combination of both. So that's very straightforward and really easy to understand. So when I'm in a traditional recording setup or scenario, how do I get the signal into the live room for my performers? Well, every channel, as I mentioned, has a stereo cue send. This can be used to create a performer cue mix, which can feed a live room headphone amp system. We also have two headphone outputs on the console armrest each with their own source selection and level control. And with this, you can record artists directly in the control room very easily. And if you have more than one performer requiring their own unique cue mix, aux two and three can become a second stereo cue send with full talkback capability. Okay, so you mentioned talkback. Can you just talk me through that? Yeah, so the 8424 has a talkback microphone up at the top with level and switching options that allows quick and easy communication to performers without any additional patching or cabling. And this is a feature that most in-the-box users cannot achieve without sacrificing an interface input. Does this console have return talkback? Yes, we have a return talkback system that can be used in one of three ways. You can have a traditional listen microphone set up in the live room so that you can hear performers who may not have a microphone in front of them, enabling easy communication. You can use this as a producer mic option so you can have an extra microphone that sends to the cues in the control room. So you have a producer or a manager that can communicate with those artists really easily. Or it can be used as a, an additional recording input because it has its own input and output, phantom power, gain, and compressor circuit.